Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at geometric sequences, so we can answer questions from exercise 3c. So what is a geometric sequence then? Well a geometric sequence is where we have to multiply to get from one term to the next term. So here we're going to use the letter R, it's effectively for ratio, so we're multiplying from one term to the next by the same ratio each time. By the time we've got up to the nth term in our sequence, we've got a times r to the power of n minus 1. Notice here how the second term will have um, 1 r multiplying on it. The third term will have 2 multiples of r. The fourth term will have 3 multiples of r. So the nth term here is only going to have n minus 1 lots of r multiplying by the a. Okay, so this here is going to how it's going to work. So um, find the nth and tenth terms of the following sequence. So a little question here. Uh, we can clearly see here that the common ratio each time here is 2. So r is equal to 2. Just check all the ones along yet yeah, times 2 times 2. Excellent. And the starting term here is 3. So a here is the value 3. Now to get the nth term here, we just substitute it into this formula here. This is effectively the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. So in this case here, first term is 3, common ratio is 2, nth term is obviously then 3 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now please do not simplify this to 6 to the power of n minus 1, that is not how multiplication works. Just forget that I ever said that. It's 3 times by 2 lots of n minus 1, or 2 to the power of n minus 1. So that's the formula for the nth term of this sequence, so therefore the tenth term in this sequence will be just applying n equals 10 into the formula. So in this case here we get 1536. So this here is what you need to remember for geometric sequences then, that the nth term of a geometric sequence is written by a, the starting term, times r, the common ratio, to the power of n minus 1. So it's always 1 less than the term that you're at. In this case here, we can have common ratios that are negative numbers as well. This ratio here looks like it's going to be a ratio of negative half. Let's just check for the second term in the sequence as well, because when I times a negative number by negative a half, I get a positive 10 in this case here. So that works. The common ratio here is minus a half. And in this case here, we want to work out the nth term, so just applying this formula here. So it's 40 times minus 0.5, make sure you put these in brackets, to the power of n minus 1. For the tenth term here, just substituting n equals 10, we're going to get 40 times minus 0 0.5 to the power of 9. Plug that into your calculator, and you're going to get minus 5 over 64. Definitely expect to get a fraction here, because if our values are getting less and less each time, these fractions are going to start to appear. Okay, uh, another little brain teaser here then. The second term of a geometric sequence is 4, and the fourth term of a geometric sequence is 8. Find the common ratio in the first term. Well, in this case here, the second term, we just can see this here, is to a times by r, and that's equal to 4. And the fourth term, which is a times r to the power of 3, is equal to 8. Now, the way that we're going to solve these two simultaneous equations here is dividing one equation by the other. So if we call this equation 1 and equation 2, what we're going to do is 2 divided by 1. So that's ar cubed divided by ar, and in that case there we'll get just r squared, and 8 divided by 4 gives us 2. So in this case here, the square root r is equal to 2. Uh, so now we just apply it. Uh, the first term, sub it into the easier of the expressions here, and we get a is equal to 2 root 2. Okay. So, uh, another little bit of a challenging question here. The numbers 3x 
and x plus 6 form the first three terms of a geometric positive geometric sequence. Uh, calculate the 15th value of this sequence. Now to calculate the 15th value we're probably going to need to know a and we're probably going to need to know r. I'd concentrate on working that out first. Um, so what we're going to see here, now they've jumped quite a lot in this video here, so 3 times by, um, so 3 is the first term, and then you times it by r, and you get 3r, and then for the second term here, you're going to get 3r squared. Now in this case here, we're timesing by r both in from both one term to the second term and the second term to the third term. So it must be the case that if we were to do, um, well, how can we work out R? We can do second term divided by first term must be equal to the same as the common ratio between the third and the second term. And in both cases here, we can work this out by getting R. So in this case here, that's what they've done in this question here. They've got x over 3, that's the common ratio between the first and the second term, and then x plus 6 over x, which is the common ratio between this third term and the second term. And the common ratios must be the same, so that's why they've put an equal sign in between here. So now what we're going to do is now solve a quadratic. Now remember here that we only have a positive geometric sequence, so we're only going to take the positive value of x in this case, so x is 6. So our sequence is going to go 3, 6, 12, and we can see there that the, the, um, the common ratio there is going to be 2. So it goes 3, 6, 12, blah, blah, blah. First term is 3, common ratio is 2. The 15th term is going to be 3 times 2 to the power of 14, one less than the 15th term that we want, uh, which gives us an answer of 49,152. Okay, so in this case here, the way that we worked out the common ratio was we looked at the ratio between the second and the first term and the third term and the second term. Okay, so another type of question you could be asked is to find the first term that exceeds 1 million out of this sequence here. So 3, 6, 12, 24. It shouldn't take too long because we're doubling each time here to get to 1 million. Um, so let's consider uh, what we've got here. We've got a starting term of 3, a common ratio of 2. and We want our sequence value to be bigger than 1 million. So what we'll do is we'll start to plug these values into the nth term rule of our sequence here. It's a geometric type sequence, so we must use the geometric um, formula. In this case, a is 3 and r is 2 to the power of n minus 1. And this must be bigger than 1 million. So what we'll do is we'll find out the value for n that will make this as exactly a million, and then we'll just round up. So the first thing we've got to do then to solve this equation here and work out what n is, is to divide through by the 3. So we've got a million divided by 3. And now what we want to do is apply a mathematical operation that will effectively get rid of the 2 and just leave us with n minus 1 on the right hand side. Now how do we get rid of a base number on a power? The answer to that is we log it. So what we're going to do from this step to the next step is take log 2 log base 2 of both sides. So log base 2 of a million over 3 is going to equal our power. So that's going to equal n minus 1. So add 1 onto the other side and you'll get a million uh, over 3 log base 2 of that and then add 1 onto it afterwards. Calculate this value <clears throat> and we get n is equal to 19.35. So 19.35 will be the exact value to make this um, sequence equal to a million, this sequence term. Um, so the next value greater than a million is going to be the 20th term. So the first term to exceed 1 million will be the 20th term. So it actually gets to above a million relatively quickly, considering we're starting with very small numbers here. Okay, your turn. Your turn to have a go at these questions here. Make sure you remember you to use the formulas for the geometric sequence um, rather than the arithmetic sequence. Okay, pause the video and try these two questions out.
All right then, so let's have a go at part A then. So part A obviously is starting at three and has a common ratio, sorry, starting at two and a common ratio of three each time. The sixth term in this sequence is gonna be calculated by two lots of three to the power of five. Remember, it's always one power less than the term that you're at. So two times three to the power of five. Just compute this on your calculator, you get 486. And for the nth term here, it's just gonna be two times three to the power of n minus one. Part B here, um, we're gonna have a starting term of 100, and it looks like in this sequence here, we are halving each time. So the sixth term in this sequence here is gonna be 100 times by a half to the power of five, always one less than the term that we actually want. So 100 times 0 0.5 to the power of five, we get 25 over eight. And the nth term is gonna be very similar, 100 times one over two to the power of n minus one, because it's always one less than the term that we're at. Okay, so that's answered question one for us. Let's have a go at question two, question eight in the textbook. The first three terms of a geometric sequence are x minus eight, two x and x squared, show that this is true. Okay, what we're looking for here then is for the common ratio between the first term and the second term to be the same as the common ratio between the second term to the third term. And the way we can calculate this is by doing second term divided by first term, which will calculate the ratio between the two um, terms, is must be the same as the common ratio between the third term and the second term. So this here is what it's going to equal. Now what it's probably looking for us to do here is do a bit of cross multiplying. So we're going to get 4x squared equals 8x squared minus 2x cubed. No, just uh, x cubed. And then what we'll probably do is add the left hand side onto the right hand side and we'll get x cubed minus 4x squared. Uh, is equal to zero. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Good. Okay, part B then is to find the 20th term of this sequence. Well, we, we can't stop here. We need to work out what x is. It can't be zero, so the only other solution here must be a four. Um, so if x is four, then we can work out the common ratio. So in this case here, it's going to be uh, 8 divided by 4, which will give us 2. So the common ratio is 2, and the starting term here is going to be uh, 8 minus x. 8 minus 4 is 4, so the starting term is 4. So now we can work out the 20th term. U20 equals 4 times 2 to the power of 19. Remember, it's always one less than the term we're at. Four times two to the power of 19 is equal to, whoa, 2,097,000, uh, 152. Part C, state whether 4,096 is a sequence in the term. Well, in this case here, 4,096 would have to equal four times two to the power of n minus one. Uh, divide through by 4, and we're going to get 1,024 equals 2 to the power of n minus 1. Uh, I do remember that 1,024 is in the two um, geometric times tables. So if we do log base 2 of 1,024 on our calculator, so log base 2, 1,024, we get 10, yeah. So 10 is equal to n minus one. So n is the 11th term. So yes, uh, 4096 is in our sequence. It's the 11th term. Is the 11th term in the sequence. 
So there we are then, that's the answer to these couple of questions here then. Have a go at some of the questions from exercise 3C. Um, make sure you persevere through the difficult ones. Have a go at the later ones. Uh, make sure you apply the rules that we've learned from geometric series uh, and sequences. Don't get it confused with the arithmetic formulas. Okay, thanks very much for watching.